In this video, I'm gonna teach you exactly where and how to set your hot cues for quick mixing on both your DJ controller or directly off your laptop. So make sure you stick around. Hey, what's going on gang? Bolo the DJ here from Pro DJ Academy. And if you're new to the channel, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below to stay up to date with weekly DJ tips, tools, and tutorials just like this one here. Also consider joining our free Discord community as this is where we engage daily, giving you personalized feedback and answering your unique questions as you progress in your journey along as a DJ. Now, for those of you who have no idea what hot cues are, they're essentially just different customizable markers that you can program onto a track so you can quickly jump to a specific point of a song or you can use them to signify a new section of a song or you can use them to do cool routines and tricks when you're mixing out live. I personally always use hot cues in almost every single transition that I do and so I highly advise whenever you go to download a new batch of music, you take a few minutes to go through it and set your cue points ahead of time so when you go out to play it out live, whether you're at a venue or at a club, you're gonna know exactly what markers you have set and so if you need to jump to a specific point in a song on the fly, you can quickly do so. And don't worry, I'll teach you exactly where the best places for you to program your hot cues is so whether you're setting your hot cues on your dj controller or directly off your laptop i'll teach you both methods so let's get straight to it one quick note here for the examples that we're going to be covering today we are going to be working off of record box however it's going to be nearly identical whether you're working off of record box or serato so if you're a serato user no worries at all we still got you covered just make sure you follow along all the buttons are going to be nearly the same all the places to set your cue points are going to be the same so just make sure you follow along and you'll be all good now, as you can see here, I have a remix to Don't Stop the Music by Rihanna. And I currently have no hot cues programmed, as you can see on the waveform down here. And so the first method that I'm going to show you guys is how to set your hot cues directly off your DJ controller. So to set a cue point directly off your controller, all you got to do is make sure that your needle is set directly above where you want to set your cue point. As you can see, the needle is currently at the very beginning of the song. And so once your needle is in place at exactly where you want to set your first cue point, first thing you got to do is make sure you are in the hot cue bank. If you were somewhere else, all you got to do is just jump back here. And from there, all you got to do is decide which letter you want to assign to this cue point. In this case, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Because this is the very beginning of the song, I'm going to go ahead and label it with cue point A just by pressing on that button there. And so as you can see now that the cue button has been programmed, it's going to change the color of this button here, which is now orange. Now that I have cue point A programmed, no matter where I am in the track, Whenever I press that button, it's gonna bring me right back to that point that I programmed, and it's gonna play directly from there, like so. Now let's say I made a mistake and I no longer wanna have cue point A assigned to the very beginning of the song. All you gotta to do to erase the cue point is hold the shift button and press the same cue point again. And as you can see, now that it goes blank, that means there's no longer a cue point program to that button there. This means that whenever I press that cue point button again, it's gonna now program wherever the needle is set to, like so. Again, in this case, I don't wanna have cue point A programmed to be one and a half bars in, so all I gotta do to delete it is hold the shift button, press on that cue point A, and it's gonna delete that cue point. One quick note to mention here is you can actually program hot cues using your DJ controller while you're mixing live. So if you're in the middle of a mix and your needle is moving and you notice there's a part of the song that you wanna set a cue point at, just so you can jump back to it later for future use, all you gotta do is press on one of these blank cue buttons and wherever your needle is at the time of pressing that button, that's exactly where it's gonna program a hot cue for later use. This is what that looks like. Now I'm sure you can see how this comes in handy, but let's just say you didn't have time to program all your hot cues before playing your songs out live. While you're actually playing live, you can go through and program your hot cues. As long as you press on one of the buttons that are blank, you can go ahead and program a new one, and then you can jump back to those later in the song or later in the mix or for a future set. Now let's say you're mixing out live and you wanna program a new cue point, but all your cue buttons are full. As you can see here, they're all highlighted in orange. All you gotta do again is even while you're playing out live, you can hold the shift button and press whatever cue point you wanna delete and whether the needle is still or whether the needle is moving, it's gonna delete that cue point. So I'll show you what that looks like while the needle is moving. It's literally that simple for you to program and delete your cue points using your DJ controller, whether you're prepping your songs ahead of time or if you're out mixing live. Now let's say you don't have a DJ controller in front of you and all you have is your laptop. So let's go ahead and cover exactly how to set your cue points using strictly your laptop and cover exactly where the best places for you to set your cue points are for quick mixing. So as you can see here, I have record box pulled up and currently I'm in performance mode and I'll be switching over to export mode, but this actually works in both modes. So what I'll go ahead and show you first is performance mode. 
As you can see down here, we have the three hot cubes that we previously programmed on the DJ controller. If you don't see the hot cube bank for whatever reason, all you gotta do is click this drop down and you might be on a different one. All you gotta do is just switch back to the hot cues and you'll see your hot cue bank. In order to delete these hot cues and start from scratch, just for the sake of this example, all you gotta do is press on these X's up here on all three of these and it's that easy to delete your hot cues directly off your computer. While you're in performance mode to set a cue point, all you gotta do is hover to the area where you wanna set your cue point. <laughs> Now that my needle is exactly where I wanna set my cue point, all I gotta do is press on whatever cue point I wanna assign this to. In this case, I'll do C. As you can see, now it's programmed and you can tell by the letter that came up here in green. You can also see on the waveform over here, the cue point C is there. Now, whenever I press that button, even on the computer or on my DJ controller, it's gonna play directly from this point here. So that's how to set your cue points on performance mode. Let's go ahead and jump over to export mode just to show you how you can do this when you're prepping your sets. As you can see here, we now have export mode pulled up here and I have the cue points that I just set on performance mode. So all I'm gonna do is actually just delete them here by pressing these X's. And so when you're in export mode, you can either program your hot cues using these buttons down here or you can jump over to this bank here and program them here as well. As you can see here, I'm gonna set cue point A just by pressing here. It'll assign it there and it'll assign it here as well. You can delete it by pressing the X here or you can delete it by pressing the X up here. Super straightforward, I know, but I just wanna make sure you are aware of all the different ways you can set your cue points and how to delete your cue points if you ever need to. So now let's go ahead and cover exactly where the best places for you to program all your hot cues are. In most cases, you're almost always gonna have up to A cue points. Again, that's A through H here. And so the first three that I always like to set is gonna be the start of the track, the start of the chorus, and then the drop. So just to show you what this looks like, as you can see, I'm at the very beginning of the track here, so I'm gonna set cue point A. And what I'll do here is I'll play through the song and figure out exactly where the chorus starts, which in this case looks like it's gonna be somewhere around here. So I'll double check just by jumping there. And before I actually program the cue point, I always like to double check to make sure that's exactly where I want it just by pressing play. Perfect, now I know that's exactly where the chorus slash buildup starts. So I'll go ahead and set my cue point B right at that marker there. And the reason I like to set cue point B at the start of the chorus or the buildup is because let's say for example, I ended up looping one of these sections here and it's time for me to mix into this next song, Don't Stop the Music. All I gotta do is press cue point B and I'll jump straight to the buildup slash chorus and no one's ever gonna know a thing. So the next cue point that I like to set is gonna be at the start of the drop. So if for whatever reason I forgot to mix in the next song at the right time, I can just always jump back to that cue point C, which I know is always gonna be at the start of the drop, and it's gonna buy me a little bit more time for me to start mixing in this next song. All I gotta do is fast forward up here to the start of the drop, which looks like it's gonna be right here. Again, I'll double check just by pressing play. Perfect, so now we know that's gonna be the start of the drop. I'll go ahead and set cue point C here. And just like that, I have my first three cue points pre-programmed. I like to keep these three cue points consistent throughout all my songs that I pre-program my cue points for. So no matter what song I'm playing or no matter where I'm at in a mix, I know whatever song I have pulled up in front of me here, I can always jump straight to the intro of the song by using cue point A, the beginning of the chorus slash buildup using cue point B, or the beginning of the drop using cue point C. I like to keep it consistent so I always know exactly where I'm at in the mix. And if I ever need to jump back to those, I always know exactly what cue point it's gonna be. So now that I have my first three essential cue points pre-programmed, that now leaves me with five other cue points that I can use to get creative and jump to, whether it's a really cool breakdown or it's a cool little vocal chop, or maybe there's a section of the song where it's strictly just vocals and you can use that to mix into the other song. These are all places that I would use and mark with these cue points down here. Just to show you a few examples here, one of the cases that I might use another cue point for would be a breakdown like the one that you're gonna hear here. That's a really cool breakdown with a really popular chorus that I know people are gonna sing along to. So I'm gonna set a cue point there just in case I wanna jump directly to that point while I'm mixing out live. And I'm gonna go ahead and program this to cue point E. Let's say for another example, I like the second drop more than the first drop. So I wanna jump directly to the second drop. All I gotta do is literally slide over here to the start of the second drop. Set my cue point F here. And what I can do is at the end of the first buildup, I can jump straight to that second drop and it's gonna be a smooth jump. For our last example here, let's go ahead and say we wanna use an outro of a song where it's maybe just the drums or maybe just the drums with the bass line. So we can jump directly to that point so we can easily transition out of this song into the next. I'll go ahead and jump to the start of this final drum loop 
and I'm gonna go ahead and set cue point H. So now instead of having to mix at some point where it was very noisy and cluttered around here, I can jump straight to cue point H and I know it's gonna be strictly just the drum loop, which I can easily use to transition into the next song. So besides the first few cue points that I like to set consistently throughout all my songs that are gonna determine the essential parts of the track, I like to use the last few cue points that I have to get super creative with my mixing and jump to cue points like a breakdown of a song or maybe I can jump over to a vocal breakdown or a vocal loop that I can just loop over while I bring in the drums of another song. The possibilities are endless. Get super creative, go through your tracks, make sure you get familiar with your music and look for those key points of a track where you can set a cue point and you can jump back to them. That's gonna really impress the crowd. It's ultimately up to you how you use these cue points. Now, if you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to master the DJ decks and how to get paid to perform in front of crowds, then make sure you check out our Intro to DJing course where we teach you everything you need to know to become fluent on any mixer and how to get paid gigs. But there you have it. That's exactly how to set your cue points using your DJ controller or directly off your laptop. I hope you're able to learn a thing or two from this video here. If you were, make sure you let us know down in the comments below and make sure you subscribe to this channel for weekly DJ tips, tools, and tutorials just like this one here. And we'll see you in the next video.